Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson with Principles of Management, Chapter 14, Almost Home. Uh, we will be speaking about the essentials of control. Uh, learning objectives, understand what is meant by organizational control. Uh, differentiate among different levels, types, and forms of control. Uh, know the essentials of financial controls. Know the essentials of non-financial con uh, controls, which are both very important. Uh, know the basics of lean control systems. And craft a balanced scorecard for an organization and also for yourself. As always, we have our planning, organizing, leading, and controlling framework. Uh, we're now down to our system slash processes. And lastly, we'll be on uh, strategic human resources. An organizational control is, is so very important. It is a, the process by which an organization influences its subunits and members to behave in ways that lead to the attainment of organizational goals and objectives. So remember, our objectives are like our sprints, our short term. Our goals are a little bit more long term. Uh, we want to establish standards, measure performance, compare performance to standards, and take corrective action when necessary. So these are, this is how you evaluate organizational uh, control. You look at the key costs and the key benefits. And you weigh those two uh, just like on the, the scales of justice. So let's just increase them and let's talk about it. So key costs. Financial costs might include paying an accountant for an audit. Uh, culture and reputation costs might include a damaged relationship with employees or tarnished reputation with investors or government. Uh, responsiveness costs refer to downtime between a decision and the actions required to implement it due to compliance with controls, right? Did you act fast enough uh, to take advantage of the opportunity? Uh, poorly implemented controls exist when implementation fails or the implementation of a new control conflicts with other controls. And then you have the key benefits. Cost and productivity control ensures that a firm functions effectively and efficiently. Uh, quality control contributes to cost control, right? Fewer de uh, de uh, defects, less waste, customer satisfaction, uh, fewer concerns, greater sales, repeat customers, and new customers. Opportunity recognition helps managers identify and isolate the source of uh, positive surprises such as new growth. Um, <clears throat> managing uncertainty and complexity keeps the organization focused on its strategy and helps managers anticipate and detect negative sur uh, surprises and respond to op or opportunistically um, to positive surprises. Decentralized decision making allows the organization to be more responsive by moving decisions uh, making to those closest to the customers in the areas of uncertainty. Uh, for instance, some businesses <coughs> make all of the decisions in one centralized unit. Other uh, organizations make them maybe in the east, south, midwest, and west. Uh, more great discussion questions. Love them, don't leave them. Ask them to yourself, ask them to your classmates, they will help. Uh, organizational control, uh, two levels. Uh, strategic control, concerned with tracking the strategy uh, as it is being implemented, uh, detecting any problems or problem areas and making any necessary adjustments. You want to make necessary adjustments prior to implementing or while you're implementing things so that you don't have to make them later. Uh, operational control, concerned with the executing, uh, executing the strategy and includes measuring return on investment, net profit, cost, and product quality. Uh, types and examples of controls, you have control, proactivity, behavioral control, and outcome control. Uh, so you have feed forward control, concurrent control, and feedback control. Um, behavioral control, you have organizational culture, your hands-on management, supervision during a project, uh, qualitative uh, measures of customer satisfaction. Outcome control, you have market demand on economic forecast, the real-time speed of a, of a product line, and financial measures such as profitability, profitability, sales, and growth, right? Uh, how profitable were we? How much did we sell? How much did our sales growth increase this year? So here are types and examples of control. So feed forward control, which there's a video posted about that. Proactively address what can be done ahead of time to help a plan succeed, right? Uh, you want to be proactive in your planning. Concurrent controls involve the real-time process of monitoring and adjusting ongoing activities and processes. So the key word is concurrent, meaning that it's going alongside uh, with, uh, with the real-time process. So the process is going on and we're making adjustments on the fly. Feedback controls involve the gathering of information about a completed activity, evaluating that information, and taking steps to improve uh, similar activities in the future. This is very important, not like a super dynamic diagram, but it's super important. Controls is a part of the feedback loop, so you have organizing, leading, controlling, planning, organizing, leading, controlling, planning, right? It goes in a loop. I organize it, 
we leave to make it fully functional, uh, fully effective. We control, fix whatever problems we have, and then we continue to go back to planning to fix it some more, right? So I plan it, right? Then I organize it, then we lead, then we control. And it's a, a never ending loop, but it's a good loop, right? So uh, check out these output controls. Just want to touch on a few of these really quickly because they're, they're pretty interesting. Uh, because real estate agents are paid a percentage of the selling price when a house sells, the number of dollars generated and houses sold is an important metric. Many realty offices have designations like $5 million club to recognize very productive realtors, right? So you remember we talked about smart. Uh, uh, goals, right? Those are measurable goals. Uh, grade point average uh, provide a tangible means to compare students for employers and graduate schools, right? So it's tangible to say, hey, everybody's on the same scale. Uh, in the move, uh, in the movie uh, Elf, the main character Buddy leaves Santa's workshop uh, when the number of Etch-a-Sketch toys he produced in nearly uh, 900 is nearly 900 units lower than the standard pace, right? So this is the pace that you should be at. This is the pace that you're at. Right? Right. Uh, so those are the things that that we use to uh, measure uh, measure those type of uh, outputs. Uh, so now let's look at behavioral controls. Right. So we have some that are financial, some that are non-financial, but you need a mix of both within a company. So no shoes, no shirt, no paycheck. Uh, many food service companies have strict attire or requirements to make sure employees are in compliance with the rules of the Food and Drug Administration and uh, those of the local health departments, right? I wouldn't want anybody back there, you know, frying up my burger uh, without a shirt on, right? Uh, you know, I, I've seen a funny video on, I'm probably on like True TV or something. There's a guy, I guess he thought it was funny. Uh, that he said, you know, he was going to take a bath and, uh, you know, where they wash the dishes at the fast food place. I think it might have been, uh, I don't know which, it was one of the fast food places, right? So I don't want to say, you know, which one it was uh, because uh, I don't know. But it wasn't anywhere in California, so don't worry. Um, <clears throat> Casual Fridays provides a welcome break in offices that enforce strict dress codes. Some companies allow you to have Casual Friday every day. Uh, some companies allow you to uh, pitch into certain funds where you can have it on Friday and on Monday. It just varies. And many businesses require that checks are signed by two people prevents a dishonest employee from embezzling money seen a lot of embezzlement uh, <clears throat> and fraud throughout my day uh, very very uh, sad things but uh, eventually they always get caught so as I said financial and non-financial controls so let's talk about both so financial controls involves uh, management of costs and expenses in order to control them in relation to budgeted amounts uh, it will include aspects of the organization's financial conditions such as uh, assets sales and or profitability forecast non-financial controls uh, but like I said they're both important uh, track aspects of the organization that aren't immediately financial in nature but are expected to lead to positive performance outcomes right so how nice you are to the customer is going to lead to how much money that customer is going to give you. It can include customer loyalty, referrals, employee satisfaction, and other such performance measures. Uh, these are the types of measures. I want you to go over this one uh, on your own, uh, but you know, as you can see, it kind of goes all the way across. Um, well, I'll, I'll go over the first one just to kind of help you lead you down the path. So, liquidity measures helpful for understanding if obligations can be paid when due. Current ratio: your current assets divided over your current liabilities. So, how much do you have money-wise and asset-wise over how many liabilities? How much money do you need to pay out? A ratio of less than 1.0 suggests that the firm does not have enough cash to pay its bills right and that's why companies have cash flow problems uh, cash in your checking account right do you have enough cash to cover your monthly debts right so key measure uh, key uh, reference so uh, check that one out on your own but but that's kind of how the flow goes and it, it's it's more of a I guess uh, you know like a strategic way of looking at things to say are we in the right position with our company as far as our money goes but also other factors within the company that are not necessarily financial more great discussion questions for you to uh, to ponder about, to get the great answers to, uh, and become a great business mind in corporate America. Uh, financial controls so provide the basis uh, for sound management, and uh, it provides the basis uh, for sound management and allows managers to establish guidelines and policies that enable the business to grow, to succeed and grow. Right. So you want your business to continue to grow. If you don't continue to grow, then you'll probably continue to uh, lose business or you lose your market share to another company. <clears throat> to secure financing, uh, banks commonly request the financials, the balance sheet, income slash profit and loss uh, statement, and the cash flow statement. All things that are required to make a, a good financial decision uh, when you want to purchase a company or do business with a company. 
The balance sheet is a snapshot that includes total assets, uh, what the business owns, items of value, uh, right? So if you own like, you know, a gnome outside, it's probably not an item of value. It's not going to go on your balance sheet. Uh, and the total liabilities, what the business owes, right? What you own, how much you have, and what you owe, how much do you have to pay out to other individuals and or companies. Balance sheets are usually done at the end of each month. Uh, assets, uh, current assets are those assets that are cash and can be or can be readily uh, converted into cash in the short term, right? You can sell a car, you can sell a building, convert it into cash in the in the short term. Examples include accounts receivable or inventory, right? So accounts receivable means I, you, your company ABC and I owe you money, that's accounts receivable, right? Those are current assets. Inventory, uh, that means like uh, you, you, you sell cars and your inventory is counted as an asset right because it can be you know easily turned into cash fixed assets are those assets uh, that are not easily converted into cash in the short term uh, it, examples include uh, land building equipment vehicles furniture and fixtures sometimes it, it depends right uh, so they, they say they're fixed but if you have some equipment that uh, you are no longer paying the lease on then you can uh, you can convert it pretty quickly but typically if it's a big item ticket that costs a lot of money it may take you a little bit of time to move it intangible assets uh, these can include goodwill trademarks patents uh, licenses copyrights formulas franchises uh, things that you can't touch remember that's that's what intangible is uh, liabilities current liabilities are those coming due uh, in the short term so some money that I owe you uh, next month I owe you some money uh, <clears throat> in the month of September man it's August already uh, long-term debt slash liabilities come due a uh, time period uh, of more than one Owner's equity refers to the amount of money the owner has invested in the firm. And this is just a sample balance sheet. I want you to check that out on your own. Uh, not accounting class, even though I teach accounting class as well. But I want you to, to kind of check that out. And, and it's very easy to just to understand. These are your assets on this side. These are your liabilities, right? This is what you have. This is what's going out. Money, you know, things that are inside the company. Money that's going out of the company. Liabilities, right? Uh, you know, so like a, a, a lot of times people wonder, like when they say, oh, man, should I open up, you know, a bunch of credit cards? Well, no, because if you have a bunch of credit cards open, right? Think about that's a liability. All right, so if you go to buy a house and you have seven credit cards, but there's a zero, ba zero balance on all of them, but each credit card is worth twenty thousand dollars, that truly means that you have, uh, you know, um, a liability of possible one hundred and forty thousand dollars that you could just go out and spend, and then possibly not be able to pay for your house. So you know, mortgage companies they they look at things like that. So sometimes people don't always know know that. Uh, profit and loss statement has five uh, major categories, sales or revenue, right? So how much you sell, revenue is how much money comes in. I didn't say profit, I said revenue. Cost of goods sold or cost of sales, how much you're paying to get the goods in and, or, and or create the goods uh, or, and or pay the people who sell the goods for you. Gross profit is how much you make before, you know, everything else like taxes, before paying other people out, things of that nature. Operating expenses, operating expenses are, are you know, the cost of doing business. And net income is how much you actually make, right? Uh, so our gross, we see a gross amount on our check, right? And then what we truly get is our net amount. But what do you always tell people when they ask you how much you make? You always tell them, I, I tell them my gross amount, right? You don't tell them what your take home pay is. But that's just normal human nature, right? A uh, sample income statement looks like this as well. Once you review that uh, as well on your own, they're, they're really straightforward. We're not getting into the nitty gritty of accounting, um, but it just you know goes to your sales and revenue, cost of goods sold, that's your gross profit, and then you subtract what type of expenses you have, like selling expenses, administrative expenses, and these are your total operating expenses. So you take your gross profit minus your operating expenses, and you get your operating income. Uh, no, I said I wasn't gonna go through it, but I guess it just couldn't resist. Uh, then you have your interest expense, uh, income before taxes, uh, tax expense, and then that's your net income right there. Just, you know, so, but still go through it. Uh, just an easy, simple flow income statement. Cash flow statement. And why do you need to know about a cash flow statement? Because companies sometimes need cash, right? And you'll see things about companies doing business with other companies and saying, hey, you know what? Um, you know, I have these people that, that owe me, owe me money. And, uh, <clears throat> Uh, you know, I'll give this debt to you if you give me cash and give me that cash less 10%, right? So uh, somebody owes me $100,000 and you have $90,000 in cash. I say, can you give me $90,000 and I'll give you this, this debt? I'll give you the debt. They're going to pay you $100,000 in September, but I need the cash today. 
right? And that's that's how business works. We all pay to use the money that we're using. You're paying to use the, the money to make, uh, make a mortgage payment. You're paying to use the money to make a car payment. Uh, so cash flow statement is composed of one, beginning cash on hand, right? How much do you have? Cash receipts, deposit for the month, how much is coming in? Cash paid out for the month, how much is going out? And ending cash position, where you end it for the month. Helps managers to determine whether the company has positive cash flow or do you have negative cash flow, which is not a good thing. Cash flow is probably the most immediate indicator of an impeding, uh, impending problem since negative cash flow will bankrupt the company if it continues for a long enough period of time. Great discussion questions. Be sure to review those. Non-financial controls, which are always so interesting. Deal with those every day. Customer, sa customer satisfaction is an increasingly important metric in strong financial controls. Measuring non-financial controls is, a, is important as they are likely to affect profitability in the long term. Right, So you can't be mean to all your customers even if they're only show in town because some guy is going to have the great idea to start a different company and compete against you. Still all your co uh, customers. Common mistakes with non-financial controls, failure to use non-financial controls, right? So if you don't use them, it will abuse you. Uh, not linking control to strategy, all right? Uh, <clears throat> failing to validate the links. Failure to set appropriate performance uh, targets, like uh, we send out uh, surveys, you have to have an average of four out of five. And measurement failures, uh, if you're just not measuring the right thing. Uh, more great discussion questions, what are non-financial controls, name some examples. Well, like for instance, customer satisfaction, uh, return customers, things of that nature. Uh, lean control. Lean is a system of non-financial controls used to improve product and service quality and decrease waste, right? So a big thing is, a company comes to a point where they can't make any more money. So what do you have to do to make money? You have to save money, right? So if I make a hundred thousand dollars, right, and I know that I'm going to make a hundred thousand dollars again the next year, but I end up saving twenty thousand dollars. In essence, I just made a hundred and twenty thousand dollars because I decrease my expenses, right? So I still came out with more money. So whether it's making it or saving it, it's still increasing your your cash flow. Uh, it is a process for measuring and reducing inventory and streamlining production. And the biggest, uh, you know, um, example of that is Lean Six Sigma. I don't know if you guys have a Six Sigma belt. I do have a green Six Sigma belt uh, from, you know, some some uh, cl a series of classes that I took. Great experience. It helps you to eliminate waste in any project, uh, any process or project. Developed by Motorola in 1986. Yeah, you remember Motorola and those uh, pagers, right? Beep, beep, beep. Uh, the term Six Sigma uh, refers to a process where statistically 99.99966% of products manufactured or 3.4 defects per million operations are statistically free from defects. So every million widgets you make, 3.4 of those are bad. And I think that's a pretty good ratio. The Toyota Motor Company, Company Corporation uh, developed lean tools and techniques in the 1950s. Lean organizations strive to improve flow by reducing the size of production batches. And in the process, they increase flexibility and lower costs. Uh, Muda. All right, so let me just increase this to tell you what Muda is. So Muda is a Japanese term for activity that is wasteful and does not add value. It's also a key concept in lean control. Waste reduction is an effective way to increase profitability. Uh, here are the seven deadly wastes along with their definition. All right, so I'm not going to go through the definition once you go through that on your own. But defects, overproduction, transportation, waiting, inventory, motion, and overprocessing. Right, so I want you to read through those. Really, really interesting. But you know, some of these I like for you to read through just so you can kind of understand it in your brain and say, you know what, there's some waste in what I'm doing at work. Let me see if I can eliminate some waste and free up some time to do some other things. So five core principles of lean: define value of uh, from customer's perspective. Doesn't matter what you think is valuable; it matters what the customer thinks is valuable. Uh, describe the value stream for each product or service. Create flow in each value stream. Uh, produce at pace uh, or pool of an uh, actual uh, customer demand. And right, so you don't want to if if your customers need 90 benches a week, right? You don't need to produce 300. Right? You may need to produce uh, 90 plus an additional 10% just in case, uh, but you don't need to produce 3,000 of them. Uh, strive to continuously improve all business operations. So you should always be devoting some time to say, I'm thinking about improving my business. Uh, more great discussion questions about what is lean control, what types of industries might uh, find lean controls valuable, right? such as manufacturing, things of that nature. 
and uh, of course Muda. We don't want to waste our, our time. We don't want to waste our, our activity. So uh, we should be cognizant of Muda. Uh, Balanced Scorecard is a control system that translates an organization's vision, mission, and st strategy into specific quantifiable goals and to monitor the organization's performance in terms of achieving these goals. Just as wine tasters can rate the fruit of the vine on numerous dimensions, the Balanced Scorecard integrates a variety of measures or of organizational quality and uh, performance measures. Uh, so the balanced scorecard hierarchy, uh, you see uh, it has a vision and mission all the way at the top because it's a vision and mission of the company. The strategy, hopefully your strategy, personal strategy is aligned with the strategy of the company. Balanced scorecard and strategy map. Strategic initiatives, what do we need to do, right, which should be communicated downward. And metrics, how will we know when we've done it, right? So what do we measure to know that we've done it? And then you have our personal objectives is what do I need to do to be on board with this and be in alignment with what the company needs for me to do right so you have your learning and growth your internal your customer and financial so our strategy uh, what do we want to achieve in learning and growth initiatives uh, and growth uh, initiatives uh, what we need to do in this area metrics how we will measure our success so internally our strategy is what we want to achieve in, uh, in internal initiatives what we need to do in this area metrics how will we uh, measure our success so same thing all the way through uh, for these for uh, customer and financial as well uh, your personal balance scorecard right so you should have your own personal balance scorecard to make yourself better uh, and to improve yourself uh, as you know I, I try to improve myself as well uh, because there's a lot of room for improvement uh, learning and growth uh, your skills and learning ability internal your physical health and mental state customer external uh, relations with your spouse children friends employer and colleagues and financial financial stability to what degree are you able to fulfill your financial needs uh, last but not least more great discussion questions such as what is a balanced scorecard you should know that if you don't then flip back some slides and figure it out uh, and or read the textbook uh, so as always have a good day and a great week this is the end of chapter 14 principles of management all you have left now is chapter 15 as always have a good day and a great week